Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. I hope you guys all enjoy and breaking news, our first story today brought to us by Decay. I'll link the article down below for all of you guys to read through and I'm sure a lot of you guys have also heard about this. I'll give you my opinion on this as well and some other evidence out there as to why Virtus Pro could be making changes in the future. So again, the article is linked down below for all of you, but apparently it will be Taz, the oldest member of the Virtus Pro roster to be the target of the next roster change. And apparently Virtus Pro is trying to acquire Mishu from Team Kingwin. Now to give you guys an idea of how much money they're trying to spend on this guy, according to Decay, it will be a around a $300,000 buyout, which is insane. Compare it to something else out there, when FaZe acquired Nico many, many months ago, it was apparently for around $400,000. Now, Nico argued that it was way less than that, which just goes to show you, if Virtus Pro does pay $300,000 for Mishu, it goes to show you how much desirability he really does have in the Polish scene. Now, Team Kingwin had a great year 2017, a great up and coming year, and Mishu definitely a standout player. Probably what many people would have picked to be a Virtus Pro potential player would have been Mishu. Now, apparently, if Virtus Pro does not acquire him, they will go after members of Team AGO. AGO also a very good rising Polish team out there, playing well against other Polish teams like Virtus Pro, like Team Pride, and I imagine if they can't get any AGO guys, well, the fact is this, if they don't get Mishu from Kingwin, they will get an AGO guy. These organizations, and that much money in the, on the line, these organizations, the organizations are bound to bend and bound to sell their players out. And there's no way a, an organization like AGO is going to hold out their players for $300,000. Luckily though, Kingwin can afford to do that. So apparently, if they can't afford Kingwin uh, Mishu, they will go somewhere from Team AGO and on down the line from there, but apparently it will be Taz for sure out the way and out the door, and according to many sources out there, he could be retiring from CSGO. Now, we'll talk about that in a bit as well. I do want to talk about now currently, though, as to what this could mean for the future of other roster members for Virtus Pro, and apparently in the article as well, we do touch on the fact that Neo has also been placed in a warning bracket. So, the team, not only did they say Taz is out, they also went to Neo and said, by the way, if performance is not improved for Virtus Pro, Neo, you're out next, and that is in insane to hear that kind of wording in the article itself. Insane to see that Neo and Taz, we could have almost half the roster be out the door just like that. But this article really makes us all beg the question. I talked about this in days past with all of you guys who were in my Discord chat as well. You know, the, the fact is this, it begs the question, do these guys want to be benched? We have people like Taz, people like, uh, you know, Pasha, maybe even Neo as well. They have family, they have friends out there, they have other lives to live. You know, them being nearing 30 years old or at least uh, older than 30 years old, Taz and Pasha specifically having families out there, do they almost want to be benched? We all can agree probably, you know, last year when they signed those five-year contracts, it was a bit ambitious. They paid a lot of money for those guys. And in the, in the time, of course, if you're a player being offered a solidified future in CSGO for five years, that's unheard of. For millions of dollars, of course, you're going to sign yes. It's a big, uh, ambitious signing when you first sign. But eventually, of course, after a terrible year, it can be tough to still want to play the game you've been playing for so long. And I really don't blame these guys at all. But it really does, again, beg the question, do people like Taz want to be benched? Do they want to be placed on the bench and making near as much money as their teammates who are forced to play at tournaments they don't want to go to. And of course, the, the guys in the team would make more money because they had the prize pool winnings. But if you go off Virtus Pro's last year of prize pool winnings, the, the guys, in the if they were on the bench, would be making just about the same money as the current roster because their current roster isn't winning anything. So it's crazy to see. I, I do understand where these guys are coming from and the fact that I really can't blame them for not wanting to play CSGO after a certain amount of time. But it really does beg the question, did Taz get kicked or is he going to get kicked or was it his idea that does he want to leave himself? And that really does leave us as to questioning what his contract will be. If he get if he does get kicked, he's of course entitled to that four-year contract money. Of course, if he's deciding to leave though, he might have to pay a fee for breaking that contract. We'll see what happens in the future of Virtus Pro. That was an absolutely shocking news out there. But also in some great news, just kind of transitioning here for all of you, I do want to talk about E-League and their signing with Twitch. And this is in great news because I talked about ESL last week kind of selling out to Facebook and I had my little bit of bias. I know, uh, of course, it's a CSGO news source for all of you guys. I don't want to offer too much bias to you, but I really want to know your comments down below. We've talked about how Facebook platform is just not really ideal for streaming and it still it, it still is not to this day and I hopefully it will progress in the future but I don't go to Facebook to watch my CSGO streams. We had ESL a couple weeks ago sell exclusivity for ESL Pro League and ESL 1 throughout 2018 to Facebook which means you can only watch it on Facebook and that's a big selling out. Now of course that ESL move was strictly for money. Facebook obviously offered more money than Twitch and YouTube and I was talking about does Twitch even offer these other brands, other organizations any money at all to actually come to their 
platform, and apparently they've actually dived in their pockets, guys, and acquired E-League for the next season of E-League as well, which is very, very cool to see. E-League going with Twitch and ESL going with Facebook. It's cool to see, but it's also a bit worrying for the future of CSGO. If we have all these organizations simply signing exclusivity agreements with all these other platforms, you're only gonna be able to watch ESL on Facebook, only E-League on Twitch. What if someone signs, what if, let's say, ECS signs with only YouTube? You're gonna have to go to three different platforms to watch the same darn game. It really does kind of worry me, guys. I'm also curious, though, if we can actually get the details on this. Apparently, though, I really am curious if E-League signed with Twitch because Twitch offered them the most money, or did they choose Twitch because Twitch offered them the best, the best option of viewership for their game? I think, in personal opinion, I do believe that ESL chose Facebook for money, and I think E-League chose Twitch for viewership experience. And that's the big difference here of these businesses. ESL took the money grab, and I think, in my own opinion, E-League took the viewership experience, and that's why I'm going to continue to watch them on Twitch. And of course, throughout this major, they've had great viewership and great, that is definitely just you know, adds this agreement as well. So great move, E-League, guys. They have signed exclusivity with Twitch for at least one year. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, a bit of a recap on some news out there I didn't touch on a few days ago. I'm also going to save a few stories for a weekend recap on Brown Sunday when I talk about that as well. Also, a quick warning, guys, and a quick uh, little shout out to my live stream here on YouTube. I will be live streaming all the matches, the CSGO matches for E-League this Friday. I'll be doing a little bit of drinking stream. I can't use the commentary for that live stream, but if you guys want to come and chill, talk about CSGO, I love interacting with all of you guys on live stream, and that will be tomorrow, Friday. I'll probably live stream four or five hours of the matches uh, right here on YouTube. So very lastly, though, I do want to talk about the number one female CSGO team has now been re-signed to an organization known as Res Gaming. Now that, of course, is the best roster out there. We do have Giuliano, Zaz, Antica, Vilga, and now former CLG Red player, that is Potter, and they are by far and away the number one CSGO team for the female scene out there, and they have now been re-signed. So congrats to them. That's very, very awesome and really cool news for them as well, and hopefully they're going to be paid you know, what they deserve. On top of that, though, I do want to talk about very lastly, something I missed last week, but you guys told me in the comments to talk about, and that is the new Team Rogue. Now, we talked about how the new Team Rogue has now been signed by Rex Global. They were formerly owned by a guy uh, who's actually a musician who came into the scene. Apparently, he's now been sold off to a company and organization known as Rex Global, and they still will be Rogue Gaming. But on top of that, they've now acquired new two new members, and that will be Rix and Sick, for formerly of Team Misfits. And this is actually now looking like a pretty cool roster, and I'm actually really excited for this team and their future with ESL Pro League. And why I say this is because the last season, we had Rogue, who of course was in the bottom two of ESL Pro League. They were kind of a broken roster. Their whole incident with, uh, I think it was Wardell, the opera who went back and forth between Ghost Gaming. They had a lot of players fall out for the team. And of course, I do love Hiko on that team as well. But if you guys remember their, their current roster, I guess I'll show you on screen as well. This is a wreckful roster. We have Hiko, of course, an IGL legend who, of course, has not been back to his time in a long time. We also have Kadian, who's been floating from team to team to team. I think Kadian has always been kind of underrated as a substitute player and definitely a solid player for North American ESL Pro League. I cannot wait to see that. And of course, we do have Ricks and more importantly, Sick. Sick is the up and comer for Misfits, probably the best player of that Misfits trio to leave that team. If you guys remember last week, it was the Misfits trio of Sean Gares, Shazam, and Sick. They all left Misfits as free agents, and we thought it was an attempt to maybe be re-signed by Misfits, and we thought they would stay together for their, their Pro League spot, but Sick has been signed by Rogue. I don't know how much they paid him. I think it was a great acquisition, though. He's an amazing player, and so I expect definitely a better placement this year for ESL Pro League, which is coming sometime soon uh, for these guys, and I'm very excited to announce the new team Rogue roster. I cannot wait to see how, how well they do, and this could be the return of Hiko. I hope. As always, guys, hope you all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. I will see you guys either tomorrow or Sunday with another weekend recap and some amazing stories out there. A lot happening right now in CSGO. I hope you guys all enjoy. And as always, my name is Jake Murray, like you. Leave a comment down below. I might reply to it. I might not. And uh, goodbye. They're going for it. The defuse is already happening. Hiko, are you kidding me? He's going to go for it. They win the